Today, I'm going to speak on the science behind mindset and how we can access human potential by using our emotions. By the end of this presentation, you'll learn how to gain access to the most powerful tool every human being has to their disposal. In 2018, I went on a trip to Hawaii with an ex-girlfriend, and we decided to go on one of the most dangerous trails that the island has to offer. And it was in this moment here that you see in this picture that I decided that it was time for us to turn around, that it was way too dangerous. The conditions that day were rainy, windy, and cloudy. It was very, very wet. And I just felt that it was way too dangerous for us to move on. She looked at me with disgust and disappointment and asked me, why are you so afraid? Why are you so afraid to be a man? Several months later, we broke up. And this was a story and experience that replayed in my mind over and over and over again. And I questioned that belief because to an extent, I believed her. I believed that I wasn't man enough because this was a reoccurring theme that happened in all of my relationships. And now here I am with heartbreak and the belief is still there. So this moment sparked my transformation and I no longer identify with this individual. Why? Because of mindset. I really had to do a deep dive into understanding what mindset was. And the conclusion that I came to is that a mindset is a mental model of the world constructed by one's personal beliefs and assumptions. And the key words here are beliefs and assumptions. They serve as data points based on personal experiences to validate a behavior one would take in the world, but they're not true. So for example, heartbreak. The heartbreak I experienced was based on a belief that I wasn't man enough. It wasn't necessarily that that was the woman that I desired to be for the rest of my life, but it was the belief that I wasn't man enough and that the reason that I lost her was because of that belief, which then questioned who I was as an individual and what I had to offer my worth. The thing is, because this belief isn't true, why does it have so much influence over people's behavior? Because of emotions. Emotions are a very powerful tool, and to an extent, it's very misunderstood in its purpose when it comes to elevating one's consciousness and using it to thrive in life. And the reason is it's because it's energy. It's energy in motion, and that gives us a whole lot of potential because it's the driver for action. It's what we use to fuel behavior and action in the world. So every single decision that we make or that we decide to make, even the smallest ones from deciding to eat on a snack or go to the bathroom derives from an emotion. Let me explain. It starts with physiological responses. That's your heart rate, that's your respiration, that's your perspiration, that's your eye dilation, that's hormone secretion inside of the body, the things that occur inside of the body. And when you package those things up together, they create an emotion, energy in motion. This is executed by our peripheral nervous system, meaning that we're using our senses to gather information and create these responses inside the body. And when you package them up together, you create an emotion. And that emotion is designed for you to take an action. It's a suggestion. Now, however you're perceiving an experience will determine the label that you place on that emotion. So for example, if you're hungry, you hear your stomach growling, you feel your stomach growling, you feel tired, maybe you're getting sleepy. Well, you may associate that set of emotions or that set of physiological responses as hunger. And because you believe that it's time to eat based on your beliefs or based on your mindset or however you decide to live life, you're gonna take an action. Maybe you're gonna make yourself a sandwich. And this is how we make decisions every single day. It gets deeper and deeper as the stories and the experiences that we go through in life get more complicated. But essentially, it boils down to understanding our physiological responses, understanding our body. So essentially, to learn about your emotions is to learn about yourself, right? So there are two ways that you can do this. Introspective experiences. This is the use of our central nervous system or consciousness to create and understand our physiological responses. So for example, meeting new people, public speaking, failing at new ventures, writing, journaling, meditation. These are things where we use thought to create sensations in the body. And we can use that to understand how our dialogue, how our interactions with others create emotional responses in the body. The other way is extrospective experiences, the use of our peripheral nervous system to create and understand physiological responses. This is where we're using our senses to change the physiological responses in the body. Exercise, dance, fighting, sex, ice bath, anything that overloads our senses. And this is very powerful because you have control over that. What we're designed to do as human beings is to experience the earth, experience the world around us. So this is why exercise is one of the most powerful things you can do to learn about yourself. 
When you exercise, when you create movement, you're generating physiological responses in which it's going to generate more dialogue. It's going to generate thought. It's going to create beliefs within you when you're going through discomfort. You're going to understand the sensations in your body. And what this does is it starts to build a mental model of who you desire to be, the identity you want to create. That person that's disciplined, that person that's strong, the person who's resilient and perseverant. And it solidifies that mental model with the physiological evidence. This is important evidence because now your body starts to believe the thought and believe the mental model. So at Vita Project, what my partner Rancis and I do is we create intention behind movement and exercise. We create a mindset aspect in where we design programs and lessons so that you can understand your thought. You can create awareness around your physiological responses to understand your dialogue, to be vulnerable, to then question yourself and your mental model of the world so that you can create change in your mind. Because when you decide to change your mindset, the consequence of that change is the result, the better body, the healthier body, more money, better love life, whatever that case may be, it's the understanding of yourself. It's the understanding of your emotions. And emotions are the number one tool that every human being has to their disposal to be able to create the life that they desire. I want to thank you for the opportunity to be a part of this event and be a part of reimagining wellness and well-being. I'm very honored and grateful. My name is Moises Santos, mindset coach and teacher at Vita Project. If you want to know more about what we do, visit vitaproject.com or visit my Instagram at mindset underscore mechanic. Thank you.